Why would Baker Mayfield make a statement that would indicate his time in Cleveland is over when there's no guarantee that Deshaun Watson is going to the Browns? What a simple question. That's why you made the show, because it is so simple that it's beautiful and perfect. Baker Mayfield is the quarterback for the Cleveland Guardians. I'm going to call him that from now on. Deshaun Watson has all the power, which is shocking, although not shocking, given that he loves to wield his power in circumstances where it's completely inappropriate. But there are three teams now who have already agreed to trade for Deshaun Watson. What are they, Coca? The Gail Benson Saints the Tepper Panthers, and maybe the Cleveland Browns. Those could be the three. Three teams. Oh, the Falcons with Arthur. I'm shooting blanks. Forgot about him. So maybe there's four teams. Although I think there's only three trades in play. But I think Arthur Blank had a relationship with Deshaun Watson. Not that kind of relationship. There were no massages involved. There was no assault or misogyny involved. Maybe Watson was a ball boy or something and Arthur Blank remembered or likes him or wants to be reunited and it feels so good. Who knows? All I know is this. There are three teams in the NFL that are willing to take on Watson with potentially not knowing how many games he's going to be suspended for, not caring that he still has 22 civil suits, and having total reckless disregard for any existing players on your team. Now, you know how anti-player and pro-ownership I was when I was the president of a team. So I get what's going on in Cleveland. If you have a chance to get better, you get better. Even if there's an incumbent on your team whose feelings might be hurt. So Baker Mayfield is no stranger to controversy, no stranger to conversation. Baker Mayfield is the guy who basically runs his wide receivers out of town because he thinks they're the issue. The Browns have had some success with Mayfield, by the way. It's not like they've been the paper bag Browns. But now Mayfield decided to go public in one of the most bizarre comments I've seen, postings by a player. Now keep in mind, he is in the final year of his rookie deal you get a four-year deal, you get a fifth-year option that can be picked up by the team. The Browns picked up the option. He could still be franchise tagged after this, or he could sign an extension, or they could let him go after this year. Would the Browns want Mayfield at 18 million as a backup quarterback? Are the Browns looking to trade Mayfield? to a team that needs a quarterback that's not willing to take Deshaun Watson and reward that team by getting Baker Mayfield. Do the Browns know already that Watson prefers the Browns to the Panthers, the Falcons, or the Saints? This we don't know. But Baker Mayfield didn't want to waste any time. So he did a post that talked about the past four years have been nothing short of truly life-changing. I like that. Not just life-changing, truly life-changing since I heard my name called in a draft to go to Cleveland. This is not a message with hidden meaning. I'm not sure why you have to say that. That's like saying, to be honest, well, you don't need to say that if you're being honest. If there's no hidden meaning, then no, don't say that it's not a message with hidden meaning. This is strictly to thank the city of Cleveland for embracing my family and me. Correct grammar. Some people say my family and I, but you finish the sentence, right? This is strictly to thank the city of Cleveland for embracing me. You take out my family. That's how you know the difference between using me and I is you take out one side of it and then read the sentence. And if it doesn't read right, then it's incorrect. This is strictly to thank the city of Cleveland for embracing I. Well, that doesn't sound right. So you say this is strictly to thank the city of Cleveland for embracing me. We have made many many memories. I have no clue what happens next, which is the meaning behind the silence I've had during the duration of this process. What process? Are we talking about the process of teams making trades, teams signing players? I didn't realize that players shouldn't be silent during those times. Your job is to play when you're told to play. If you're told to start, you start. If you're told to be on the bench, you're on the bench. Nobody's guaranteed playing time. He then said, I can only control what I can, which is trusting in God's plan throughout this process. Don't get me started on the God thing, but I do have a few questions for those religious people out there. 
and I've spoken to some players about this. A little detour here, Coca. I've spoken to some players about this concept when they thank God right after they do something good on the field. I've just never understood that because I'm not sure that I want to pray to a God who's got time to worry about Baker Mayfield's completion percentage. We got wars, we got poverty, we have death, we have crime. We have crazy crime in New York City right now, random crime in New York City. I'd like to think God is a little more focused on that and not just letting human beings, which is the argument I get, he's a more macro God. He's got the big picture in mind. He's gonna let human beings who he created in his image or whatever the case may be, he's gonna let them be them. And if they all kill each other, they'll kill each other. But I really would like to see Baker Mayfield not throw any interceptions. Anyway, that was a little side note. I've given this franchise everything I have. Cleveland will always be a part of Emily and my story, and we will always be thankful for the impact it has had and will have in our lives. Sincerely, Baker, Ronald, Reagan, Mayfield, Curtis, Jr. Okay. I'm the president of the Cleveland Guardians, and I'm saying, excuse me, Baker, question for you. Um, what's, th what's the issue? Something we should talk about? Well, you know, I really would like my job. Well, you're getting your 18 million either way, right? You know that. So that's guaranteed money. And I can't really control what the owner does because if Haslam wants him, he wants him. But right now, you're number one on the death chart. So I really need you to keep your eye on the ball. And the thank you to Cleveland should only come when you're done with Cleveland. And we'd like to see you here long term. Hint, that's what you say to people. Even when you know you're not going to keep a player long term, you still say it to the player because you want the player to believe that. Because if the player believes it, then you think the player will be more committed in the community, off the field, more committed on the field, will be a better teammate in the clubhouse. So you never say to a player, hey, you're here for about another 17 games. Have fun storming the castle. I can't begin to tell you why Baker Mayfield would make a post like that unless there's a chance that they spoke to Baker and said they're getting Watson and then they're going to trade him. But then why not make that post after the trade? Because now, once he does get traded, isn't he going to have to talk more? Or if Watson gets traded there and Mayfield doesn't get traded, he's going to have to talk again. Is he again going to thank Cleveland? Is he going to say that he's disappointed not to be the starter? Is he going to say that we don't know what Watson will be like because he hasn't played in a year? Hmm. It's going to be very interesting to me to see what happens.